Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to summarize uh, quantitative data into a frequency distribution table and also make a histogram out of it. Okay, so I have um, a set of data that I cl collect from a class and I'm going to summarize one of the quantitative data column. The one that I have selected is the commute time column. It's obviously quantitative. It's the numbers. So first of all, I copy it into StatCrunch. So I have opened up StatCrunch. I uh, put my cursor in the top row and I do a control V to copy it into it. I look at the data to see if there's any unusual value like zero or negative number or really any unusual one that I need to delete and I didn't see anything so the second thing I want to look at is what is the lowest number the minimum number is four you scan through it um, and then the highest number is um, 40 something 45 so you want to make sure that you know what the highest and the lowest is because when you build your frequency distribution you want your class to include all these data, it includes every data that is in it, so you need to include everything from 4 to 45. Um, so to begin with, I need to set a, a class first. So I would set up a classes manually. So I know I want to start from 0 uh, to 10. This is the upper class, this is the lower class limit, 20, 30, 40. I think Cool. I think 40 should be sufficient because 40 will include 45. And then I would say 10, 0, 2, um, 9. That's the upper class limit because that would be the last number before 10. 10 to 19. 20 to, oh, 20 to 29. And then 30. 239 40 oh, 42 49 so this is my classes that I set up now that crunch does not need it I set it up manually to remind myself what the real class is supposed to be because what happened is that crunch is going to create a new class in the frequency distribution but it is kind of a little off they have their own uh, standard which is doesn't which does not adhere to what we um, need to do in this book uh, it's a standard that some software established but it's it's just not in line with what we are teaching in this book so we write down this class it's not used by StatCrunch, but we write it down to remind ourselves what the real class is supposed to be and then we'll start to make the um, a frequency distribution. There's two steps involved. First is to like tally it into classes. So the tallying process is called the bin process. So you, you click data bin and you want to use fixed width bin. And in this case we start with zero with our bin width of 10 which is our class width. So the start at is our lowest class limit and the bin width is our class width just like what we have zero and 10, 20 like that. And then we will uh, select the column, which is the commute time column, and we do compute. So you will notice that uh, StatCrunch create a bin column. Basically, it would tell us um, uh, what this data, what bins is supposed to be, what class is supposed to be. It's supposed to be in 30 to 40. Now you notice that we do not have a 30 to 40 class. We have a 30 to 39. But anyways, when uh, StatCrunch say 30 to 40, they actually mean from 30 to just less than 40. So it's, it's just really close to what we have in our definition, but they write it differently. They use what they call the left endpoint. Then the next step is really to create the table by counting how many in each bin or in each class. So you do tables, frequency, and you click on the bin column not the original data because you want to count how many is this, uh, belongs to a class and then you do compute so this will be our frequency distribution with relative frequency computed actually so from 0 to 10 right now it actually in StatCrunch they mean 0 to 9 
So our real frequency distribution, I would say, should be 0 to 9. Let me copy this over. No. Control C. Copy it over here. Control B. Let's say classes. And then this is our new frequency. So it should be 0 to 9, 3. 11, uh, 10 to 19, 12. The numbers are correct, but it's just that this spin label is different because they use a different standard or a different way of writing it. Okay, so this would be our frequency table where we get the frequency distribution, I would say, the frequency distribution that uh, summarizes this quantitative data. Next, we're going to do uh, a histogram. Okay, so we will start from the um, raw data itself. So what we do is it's quite easy, actually, for histogram. We would do a graph. Uh, we want histogram, so click on histogram, and we actually would click on the, we'll use the real data commute minute. And remember to do the um, lowest class limit, which is zero and the width which is 10 and then we'll just do compute which is uh, over here and here this the um, histogram if you hold, uh, hold hover over the Bars, it would tell you what the frequency number is and also what the class is. You know, notice that it is a uh, mathematics, um, what it call interval notation. That means from 0 to less than 10. But they just, just, they just do not write 0 to 9. So this is uh, 12, 10 to less than 20, like that. So this is the histogram. You can look at this shape of the histogram. Is You can count. You can say this is normal distribution because you have like a one you know a few peak or the peak in the middle and then two side that are um, the two side next to the peaks are kind of symmetrical so this is a normal distribution kind of uh, a, a histogram and you notice the histogram has no spaces between them they are not the general bar graph and you obtain it by using the real data Um, the second thing or the last things I want to talk about is uh, for the histogram. Okay, so uh, there is another version of the histogram called a uh, just a casual histogram where we do not actually provide the class limit or class width. We just take on whatever the system do to us. So what you do is you click on graph histogram and you do the select the data label, but you do not give them any uh, lowest class limit or class width and you do commute compute you see how they will provide a um, frequency this uh, they will provide a histogram that is different from what you have what happened is that they, their default a class width tends to be five and uh, it's um, it doesn't look very normally distributed because there are some bars that is quite low but I would say it's still quite um, normally distributed. It's, I could I would say it is normally distributed. So you could opt for if you don't have a class limit and class width, you can just lift them op lift them um, open. And if you have, you can use uh, the the bins uh, option. Okay.